We did Jameson and then Guinness and then Teeling whiskey as well to uh, right. to end the day that day. And the Teeling and the Jameson one maybe would have had a chance to meet somebody like Fergal Murray, who's ever in that position at those various distilleries. Yeah. Uh, but then you go to the brewery and the Guinness one is built like a theme park. It's got all these levels and it's there's lights everywhere. And you're not like actually on a tour with a tour guide. You're just kind of walking around reading it. and You work your way up to the 360 bar at the top. And I was like, I was looking around. It was a Saturday. I was like, I don't think Fergal Murray <laughs> is here. Saturdays. <laughs> No, Fergal Murray's not working Saturday's chops. He's he's working. He's he's working a couple of days. So for the, for those for the for those who don't know, and I, as you could probably gather, chops was in Ireland. Uh, beyond that, though, f- we're five days away from St. Patrick's Day, and I've done this. I think this goes all the way back to Ar and I when I stumbled upon this. This is one of my great YouTube finds of all time. Is the Guinness Master Distiller uh, Fergal Murray teaching you the proper way to pour a Guinness? And we'll run it in, well, for St. Patrick's Day, we're going to probably have to run it tomorrow because St. Patty's Day is Sunday. Well, we do it Friday. We probably do it. When are we going to celebrate? Is it Sunday, St. Patrick's Day? It's the 17th. Is that Sunday? That's, uh, yeah, that'll be Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, So when do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day then when it's on a Sunday? Friday, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday? (laughs) Yeah, just the whole weekend. (laughs) Four days? As if I didn't have enough pints of Guinness over the last 10 days. Yeah. Let's have some more. Did it taste better over there? It tastes better, but I think there's also a big factor of, especially in Dublin, but in London too, because I had some some Guinness pints in London, that they all pour it correctly. Everybody knows that's what the video of Fergal Murray is about telling you the correct yeah. way to pour a Guinness. And people try to teach that to barkeeps here, but not everybody catches on. Some people just don't care, and so you might not get a Guinness. But they all do the thing where they let it sit. So when you order a Guinness, it's going to take a little bit longer, but it, it's worth the wait. And you, because you, then you have to savor. Do you take your eyes to the horizon and savor? <laughs> Did you do that atop the Guinness Brewery? When you're up top, yeah, that is. You you, you get your Guinness pint and you get to savor. And then we uh, got some food actually up there because it was right around lunchtime for us. So we got a nice beef stew. It came with this, you know, whatever the flaky crusting on top of it. So it was almost meat pie beef stew combo. Oh, Delicious. God. It had the little Guinness. It had the harp like burned into the top of the crust of there. Of course it did. Perfect. Of course it did. God. And the parents survived. Everybody, that no no travel calamities, nothing? No, nothing too bad. The worst we had was a uh, leaving Dublin to go to London. They had shut down one of the runways, so we had to wait a little bit. But we were already on the plane, so it wasn't like the plane got delayed. Yeah. Um, other than that, it was pretty smooth. I did get uh, fondled a little bit going through one of the security oh. Ones just you know, hey, step aside, and they grabbed me all over. But I was clean. I didn't wasn't trying to sneak anything on. Was that the first time you were fondled and J Lo was not <laughs> in your relationship history? Probably, yeah. It had to be it had to be the first time. Uh, well, so did you? Let me ask you this: Did you take in, in part in the local? Did you pay attention to local sports over there? The Premier League going on when you were in England. That was they had a huge one. It was Man City and Liverpool on Sunday, I believe. Um, and then Ireland is what, probably Irish. I mean, that's got to be, what is that? No, Rangers and, and that's Scotland. So the, so is that, who the who the hell would be in, would the Ireland be playing that? What, what are they playing the soccer right now? Who are their teams of note? I didn't watch a ton of the soccer except for just like catching it. The first night we got to London was Monday night. And I thought it was funny that they had Monday night football on. I can't, yeah. I don't remember who they were playing, but Arsenal went up like four, nothing in the first like 30 minutes. Of the game, and I was like, okay, so this is over. I was like trying to yeah. explain to my mom. I was like, this would be somebody being up thirty to nothing in a football game if, halfway through the second quarter <laughs> yeah. right now. Right. Like that's what's yeah. going on in this game. Uh, but the one thing that stood out to me as we because we did the Stonehenge trip, and that was a bus guided tour type thing, and then we also went out to Bath that day and made our way out. Just how many? Even when you're going through some of the smaller places, once they get to a certain size. There's their stadium, either football mm-hmm. or rugby, and there's this. And so that's like why, you know, it clicked for me. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what they don't need college sports to care about from that regionality no. thing because they've all got their teams within their towns. Yeah. When we were in Ireland, I went to Trinity College and I was like, well, but what are the college sports like? Like there has they're young kids. They have to have yeah. some sort of is. But is it more intramural? What's it like? And couldn't find uh, any games or anything. But we did stumble across some uh, rugby practice. While we were there, okay, so they they were they were throwing that out there, and rugby then was the sport 
of the week for me because this Six Nations tournament oh, is going sure. on. I didn't know much about it going in, but especially in Dublin, it was all over the place. And we were like, oh, that's going to be the Saturday, our last full day when we're in London. It's England versus Ireland in the Six Nations rugby tournament. I was like, we have to find a pub where we're going to watch that. And we did. And it was it was a great game. It was going back and forth. It looked like England maybe was going to take it early on. But then uh, Dublin scored f- or Ireland scored first, but England took a lead and belt, built to that lead. Ireland came back. Then England won on a last second, like walk off drop kick. To, they were down two drop kicks. Did you three. understand it? Game over. I understood it enough to know what I was watching in the moment. I was very okay. into it. That's amazing. Yeah, that's. I think rugby and rugby Aussie rules football and cricket. I don't. I got nothing for you. I mean, I I don't understand the scoring. I I've tried to watch it before. Sometimes I'll watch like the rugby World Cup just because I like the haka that the New Zealand guys do. Um, so I'll watch that from time to time, and I don't have a clue what's going on in terms of how they do the points and the kicking. I have no clue. I found oh, a nice glossary at the beginning of the game on my oh, phone to just be like, okay, I, I, that's enough for me to know. But there are a lot of – because, you know, especially watching in a pub, you're not getting everything that the announcers are saying. There are a lot yeah. of moments where I'm like, I don't know what that call was. <laughs> right. It's their ball now. <laughs> it's their ball now. So great trip. So you had a, that's fantastic. You had a great trip. Parents were good. Everybody's good. Uh, it's good to have you back.